In a groundbreaking discovery, US National Laboratory scientists have achieved a major milestone in the pursuit of nuclear fusion, paving the way for a limitless, clean energy source. Scientists have reached the highly sought after break even point in nuclear fusion, where the energy produced from the reaction exceeds the energy needed to initiate it. Well, not really. It depends on how you define it, and it is likely not how you think. In any case, they didn't produce net positive energy. And while this is a major milestone, it doesn't mean that nuclear fusion power generation is just around the corner. So what did these scientists actually do? How did they do it? And how far away are they from power generation? Let's discuss it. First, a quick recap on what nuclear fusion is. There are two main types of energy generation from nuclei, fission and fusion. Fission is the current way that we produce energy from nuclear power stations and is where large atoms are split. This produces energy because the binding energy of the larger atoms is lower than the products. But this also produces radioactive isotopes and the energy potential is much lower than fusion. Fusion on the other hand is when two very small atoms are combined, which releases a lot of energy produces no harmful byproducts and has the potential to generate a lot more energy than fission. But it has been extremely difficult to produce. Fission has the benefit of the atoms are already unstable. They want to decay and release energy. Fusion, on the other hand, needs to be in an extremely hot, high pressure environment, like that in the core of our sun. And making the same environment as the sun in the lab is difficult, but there have been a few ways that we have been able to achieve this. So what are these methods that can make the extreme environments required to start nuclear fusion? Broadly speaking, we can break these down to two categories, magnetic confinement and inertial confinement. Magnetic confinement uses strong superconducting magnets to confine a plasma, which is an ionized gas, to a small region so that fusion can occur. This has historically been seen as the best method for nuclear fusion, particularly on a large scale, at least large enough to produce any energy production. An example of this type of nuclear fusion reaction is the tokamak reactor, which is a donut shaped confinement where the plasma forms a circular ring inside the reactor. Major nuclear fusion projects like JET in the UK, ITER in France, and the future planned DEMO reactor also use this design. The other type is an inertial confinement, and this is very different. It uses inertial forces to push the material together into a very small space. Two examples of this are firing reactant pallets at each other at extremely high speeds. Uh, Dr. Ben Miles did a great video on this. Uh, there's a link in the description. And the other is laser confinement, where extremely high powered lasers are used to push the material into a small enough space and to heat it significantly enough to ignite fusion. This is what this latest result used. So what occurred in this latest breakthrough? And why was it so special? The scientists took 192 of the most powerful lasers in the world and directed them to hit a single target, a small capsule of deuterium and tritium, heating the contents to over 300 million degrees. All of this heating and pressure from the lasers resulted in the atoms undergoing fusion, releasing energy in the process. Now, technically, the lasers don't hit the nuclear fuel, they heat up the sides of the container so much that an intense amount of X-rays are emitted which then in turn heats and compresses the nuclear fuel. But either way, this result was so significant for one reason. The laser supplied 2.05 megajoules of energy to the target, while the energy emitted from the fusion reaction was 3.15 megajoules, which is a monumental energy output of around 150% of the energy input which is a massive leap forward and the first time we've broken the 100% barrier. So this is it. We've finally broken even. Now we can just make lots of these devices and have cheap renewable energy. 
Unfortunately, it's not that easy. This is where we need to talk about what does break even point actually mean? The energies that are given are the amount of energy that the lasers supply directly to the fusion material and the amount of energy that is then emitted in heat. What this doesn't take into consideration are a few very important details. First, the power operations of the lasers. While they supply 2.05 megajoules to the nuclear pellet, operating the lasers requires a lot more energy. Currently, the system requires more than 400 megajoules just to operate, which is well above the energy that the fusion reaction produced. When you factor this in, you find that we are still a long way away from generating a net positive power. Second, we have to collect that heat energy and convert it to electrical energy. And this process is not 100% efficient. All the losses in these processes result in a larger threshold to overcome. And finally, the process of firing the lasers can currently be performed about once per day. For proper energy generation, this would be required to happen multiple times per second. So there are still significant obstacles to overcome. Something that these scientists involved in this research were very clear about in the announcement of these results. With this technology where it is, the current best path forward to nuclear fusion power generation still lies with magnetic confinement and ITER in France. But maybe with a few more breakthroughs, this paradigm could change. If you want to know when we might actually have nuclear fusion power generation, check out this video where I discuss the current projections for when this might happen.